You know, I, uh, I came to live in Toronto when I was 17 years old. I went to Ryerson Theatre School. I was living in, uh, I was living in a rooming house, having a, a marvelous time. <laughs> and uh, it just, it was all, you know, a terribly, it was a terribly exciting time to be in Toronto. I was living on a student loan. I had a room with other theatre students. We shared a bathroom, we shared a kitchen. A rich, exciting time to be here. But uh, one of the things that was rather difficult, is I came from a close family in Scarborough. Time hung very heavily on my hands on the weekends after. We finished our theatre, our ballet classes on Saturday. You had Saturday, you had Sunday. And like most students, we had no money whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that changed my life in Toronto was the fact that the Royal Ontario Museum was free admission for all students at that time. The Art Gallery of Ontario was pay what you can. I became a museum and a gallery person. I am to this day, I belong to major galleries all over the world. Every time Jeanette and I are on tour, any city that we hit, we join the gallery while we're there so we can go there regularly and we get their great brochures and stuff sent to us in the mail. We're members of the Met, we're members in Salzburg, we're members of the Uffizi. I mean, this is, I became a gallery person because the galleries were there. And for me, the most important thing for this city, whether you're talking about art galleries, whether you're talking about theater, it's accessibility, making certain that these institutions, that these events are accessible for young people, for everyone. I'm talking about young people in particular because that's when you can grab people, like the Jesuits. You get them when you're young and you can have them for life. And it's, it's terribly important. I was interested in the arts, obviously. I was here at theater school, but I had no experience with art galleries and museums. I grew up in Scarborough at Kennedy and Ellesmere. There was nothing there. And it was so thrilling every week, and I can honestly say every weekend I was at the AGO or I was at the Royal Ontario Museum. Sometimes I went to both. My friends went with me. Sometimes we went and looked at the collection. Sometimes we just went and brought books with us. Or we would go there and sketch. Or we would just go there to hang out because it was some place to be that was nicer than the room we were living in. But it made us turn in to gallery people. When I was at Houston Grand Opera, the opera house was paid for before it opened. When I was speaking with, to the women's committee and said, how is it possible? They said, darling, by the end, we were selling individual bricks. It made me think of talk I was talking. And they were. $250, and you paid for a brick of the Houston Grand Opera. And you got an income tax receipt as well, and a healthy income tax receipt. You know, it goes on and on. I think in terms of corporations as well, I would like to think with the stupendous profits that the banks, that many corporations are making, and that's not to villainize them. I think it's wonderful that economically they are doing so well. But surely, uh, surely there's some way of what you were talking about as well, Catherine, there must be some way that we can come to an understanding that a significant donation comes back into the community because it's good for the community, because it's good for the arts, because it creates jobs besides all of the altruistic reasons. You know, the, uh, I think, I think if we don't find a solution to this, I think it, there, there are going to be very, very real implications for arts organizations in Toronto. Uh, subscriptions are down everywhere, not just here, across North America. People are planning their lives in a different way. People aren't subscribing to the theater and joining galleries in the way that they used to. They're living in a different way. We have to find other ways to bring them in, we have to have find other ways to encourage people to explore and experience the arts. None of that is going to happen if we can't initially make it more accessible. When Jeanette and I were walking to the top of our street today to buy some groceries on Eglinton, we were stopped by an elderly woman we had never spoken with before. She saw an article in the newspaper about our recent tour to Versailles, where Opera Atelier took all the top of music, 100 people, a fantastic tour, and I must say, Toronto, the city of Toronto, made it possible, played a huge role in making it possible for us to be able to do that. But she said she loved Opera Italien, and the last time she came was what, eight years ago, Jeanette? Seven years ago, eight years ago? And I said, well, why, why don't you come again? 
we are doing our first major handle offer this fall at the Elgin Theatre. You have to come. She said, I would love to come. I can't afford to come. And I don't even know what to say when someone says that. And we're not the most expensive organization, but we are expensive. We're too expensive. There has to be a way to bring it down so we can bring people in, so they can embrace the arts, experience the arts, become museum, gallery, theater, painting, mural people. It has to be a way to make it happen. I don't know what it is, but I think it has to happen. Thank you.